I heard the Spirit say to me last night as I was falling asleep, do not wither on the vine. I have not called you to wither on the vine. And I was falling asleep thinking about that. And I woke up this morning and the word was still in my spirit saying, do not wither on the vine. I felt like the Lord was saying, I want you to share this with others. The word's not just for you, it's, it's for others. He said, I have not called you to wither on the vine. We know that Jesus said, I've chosen you and I've appointed you that you go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. What kind of fruit is Jesus talking about? Some would say it's the fruit of winning souls. Others would say it's the fruit of making disciples. Some might argue it's the fruit of righteousness in our lives. A good argument could be made that Jesus is talking about us bearing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Well, quite honestly, I believe that it's all of the above. It's probably a whole lot more than that. But the real point of it all, the real point of the issue, when Jesus said, I chose you and appointed you that you go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain and not to wither on the vine, the point is that Jesus has called us to bear fruit and he's looking for that fruit in our lives. And beloved, are we bearing fruit? Are we bearing fruit? Do not wither on the vine. That's the exhortation the Spirit is giving to me and you. Do not wither on the vine. Jesus cursed the fig tree that bore no fruit. We can read about that in Matthew 21, 18, where it, it says in Matthew, Now in the morning, as Jesus returned to the city, he was hungry. See, Jesus is longing for something. He's, he's searching for something. He's seeking for something. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. And he said to it, let no, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. I've been sitting here down by the water thinking about that. Jesus cursed this fig tree because it bore no fruit. But he called us to bear fruit. Beloved, do not wither on the vine. That's the word of exhortation today. You know the scripture in John 15, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away. Isn't that what he did with the fig tree? He cursed it. He said, may no fruit ever be found on you again. Every branch in me that bears no fruit he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Oh, there's going to be some pruning in our lives. Trust me, been there, done that. And there'll be more. Because he's called us to bear fruit. And to bear more fruit. So there's pruning. Because there's, there, there are those branches that wither on the vine. There are those branches that dry out on the fig tree. On a fruit tree. I, I, I do landscaping on the east end of Long Island. I prune a lot of trees. I know what it's like to prune a fruit tree and all the, the pictures that are involved in that. He wants us to bear fruit. And he says, abide in me. That's the key. Abiding in Jesus. If we abide in Jesus, how could we wither up? If we abide in Jesus, how could our fruit wither up and dry out? I know we go through those seasons where we wither up and dry out. That's why he calls us back to him. That's why as I was falling asleep last night, I felt like he was saying, do not wither on the vine. I have not called you to wither on the vine. Abide in me and I'll abide in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Ain't that the truth? Oh, we try to bear fruit by ourselves. We try to do all kinds of things on our own. But that's not the fruit. God's not looking for the fruit of our hands. He's looking for the fruit of his spirit. He's looking for the fruit that, 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 that came from him, from, through us abiding in him. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, 
He is cast out as a branch and is withered. Don't wither. Don't wither, beloved. Don't be cast out. Don't be cursed because of complacency. Because it's it's complacency. It's our it's 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 the daily routine of the mundane that causes us to become complacent and to wither on the vine. But if anyone does not abide in me, Jesus says, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. And like I said, I sense the Lord telling me, do not wither on the vine. I have not called you to wither on the vine. Beloved, it's not God's desire for you or for me or for any of us to wither on the vine. It's not the Lord's desire for us to dry up like chaff, to be blown away and remembered no more. He's looking for a legacy. He wants us to be fruitful. He wants us to multiply. The Lord has called us to be fruitful and to multiply. He has called us to bear fruit and that that fruit should remain. Beloved, do not wither on the vine. That's the word. The Lord is searching us out, beloved. He's searching us out. He's coming to look like Jesus went to that fig tree. He came to inspect that fig tree because he was looking for something. Is there fruitfulness or is there complacency? The prophet Zephaniah and Zephaniah 1.12, the Lord spoke to Zephaniah and he said, At that time, I will search out Jerusalem with lamps and I will punish those who are complacent, who are like wine left on the dregs who think the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. That's what complacency does. It gets us to thinking that, that, that things don't matter to God, that things in our life don't matter to God. It's okay to be stagnant. It's okay to be fruitless, as long as we're, we're going through the routine. But no, if we're just stagnant and, 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 and drying up, even though we're going to church, if we're not bearing fruit, we can't say the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. That's a lie. That's a deception. Beloved, do not allow complacency to destroy your fruitfulness. Listen to what Zephaniah said again. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish those who were complacent, like wine left on its dregs. Don't allow complacency to destroy your fruitfulness, beloved. Complacency will destroy your fruitfulness, just like wine on the dregs. I'm going to mix the metaphors a little bit. But wine that's left on the dregs becomes sour over time. In, in, in ancient Israel, they, they would leave wine on the dregs for a season to, to make it stronger. But if it was left there too long, it became useless. That's the picture here in Zephaniah. There's another picture in, in, in Jeremiah 48. But I don't want to belabor that point. The point is this. The Lord comes to us seeking for fruit will he find fruitfulness or will he find complacency do not allow complacency to destroy your fruitfulness beloved do not allow that to happen do not think that the lord is not concerned about a stagnant heart you could probably go down a, a road with that one has your heart become stagnant settled on the lees the proverb the proverb says the complacencies of fools will destroy them. Do not wither on the vine, beloved. He's called you and me to be fruitful and to bear much fruit. Do not wither on the vine. Amen. I just felt like the Lord told me to share that, and I'm just being obedient to what he said. God bless you all. Have a great, great weekend. Tomorrow's church, go to church and be a vessel used of the Lord. Go, don't go to church just to, to go to church. Be a priest of the Lord, carrying the presence of the Lord. Like the Levites carry the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders. Carry the presence of the Lord into your service, wherever that might be tomorrow. And be an instrument of the Lord in the house of the Lord. That's another message for another day. God bless you all. Thanks for tuning in.